Hello and welcome to the beautiful Santa Barbara Polo Club. Today we're going to take you to the Cadillac Celebrity Polo Challenge. With me, you know this fella, don't you? Wojo from the Barney Miller Show and a hundred other movies. One of my heroes for a long time, Max Gale. Hi, Stu. It's great to be here. This is a chance for everybody to uh, dress up in the great Gatsby feeling of the 20s and 30s, which was a time when uh, polo was uh, really uh, in style in, in Hollywood. And we hope that you'll be spending the next hour or so with us because we're going to show you how polo is played both for real and by some Hollywood celebrities. The Cadillac Celebrity Polo Classic is sponsored by Cadillac, the official car of the United States Polo Association, and by your Southern California Cadillac dealers. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. Joining Max Gale and myself right now, we have the governor from the U.S. Polo Association, a guy that's been involved in polo 30 years at least, Glenn Holden. Glad to have you with us again, Glenn. Great to be here, Stu. I think you're going to like this game a lot. You know that this is the first time that two 30-goal teams have played on these fields since 1939. You'll see some of the greatest stars in the world polo. You'll like it. How do you see the resurgence of polo? What's caused it to come back in popularity? You know, it's difficult for me to say because I've liked it for so long and it's been so important to me, but it really is happening. And I really don't know the answer, but I think maybe it's because of some of these great events that you see here, including a couple of great big tournaments where they brought the best players together from all over the world. And that, of course, always gets people's attention. All right, we're about ready to start the third chucker of this match with a score two to one in favor of the International All-Stars. But as we take a look at some highlights of earlier scoring, we see the Cadillac team in the black and gold scoring to tie the game at one and one. It wasn't that a beauty. He made a, a near side cut shot. There you've got a good picture of it going right between the 24 foot goal post. So Bart Evans, who is an eight goal scorer, makes it one one. But the International All-Stars came on just before the end of the second checker. And you will see Willie Nash in action as he'll put the International All-Stars ahead by a score of two to one. The action fast and furious here. Willie, Willie's really getting a, a one-upsman on Tommy Wayman there. The great Tommy Wayman, 10 goals in the orange hat. Had Willie Nash, but Willie made that nice next shot to go. We're going to take another look at it as we take a look at some of the highlights of some of the action that took place a little bit earlier. Here's the shot that puts the International All-Stars ahead by a score of two to one. That's that nice little mare, Chispa, he calls her. She's 12 years old and playing very well. He quite, he got the uh, lead on Tommy. Okay, we're back now, ready for the third chucker of play. And we have Willie Nash, number one, Rob Walton, number two. He's the only American on the international team. The other three are Argentinians. Eduardo Moore is number three, and Daniel Gonzalez is number four. Those are wearing the white uniforms. For Cadillac USA, Graham Bray, number one, Tommy Wayman, number two, Bart Evans, who scored that tying goal a moment ago in the second chucker. He's wearing number three, and Joe Barry's number four. And we will describe the positions to you as we go along. So we've got, what, experience against a team that is not as experienced going here. You know, uh, just two of that international team has two X 10 goal players. One of them is still nine goals and the other one is eight. And they do have the experience. On the other hand, I think we have just a little bit more speed on the Cadillac team and a little better horses. Probably Tommy Wayman and Bart Evans are the best mounted players in Poland. You'll hear us refer to a 10-goal player, a 9-goal player. That doesn't mean a fellow who is who is averaging 10 goals a game, but that's a rating by the U.S. Polo Commission, and he should be a 10-goal. That's about the highest you can get. It starts with a minus 1. It's like rating Bo Derek from a 1 to 10, and I know I'm going to get some letters on that. Earlier, we talked about horses, and Max Gale talked with Bart Evans on that particular subject. Bart, this is the, the center of what polo is about with all the fringe of the style and everything. The center is really horsemanship. And I wonder if you could tell us uh, some of the essence of horsemanship with uh, regard to polo. Well, the horsemanship in polo is, 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 is relative. It's, it's related to this animal right here, to the horse. I mean, there's an old saying in polo, if you can't get to the ball, well, you can't hit it. It doesn't make any difference how good you are. So you're really at their mercy. They're the, the unsung heroes, so to speak, of the game. I mean, they make you 
what you are. So there's, that, they should deserve the credit and not really the players. You can't force a horse to do anything. You want them to do it willingly, to, 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 to meet you halfway, to, you know, for they'll go out there and give everything they've got for you for what reason? Just because you asked, you know. They'll go beyond, you know, uh, the point of being just completely tired and still keep trying. Don't, don't quit or don't, you know, do other things like that. What, what do you think is the most uh, common place where people get confused and, and kind of depart from the best interests of their animal and their relationship with it? Well, that, that's tough. It's, it's in polo and in horses, uh, it's probably just the misunderstanding, the, the lack of understanding the horse or being having too much horse for too much, for, for too little rider or player. We're back to the action in the third chucker, the International All-Stars leading the Cadillac USA team in the black with the gold stripes by a score of two to one. And this action's been going on pretty well. There, uh, Eddie Moore going up the field there, number three for the uh, international team, and uh, uh, drove that ball up to uh, Robbie Walton, number two. It's a nice shot. You know, there are four positions in polo, and we'll get into those a little bit later to tell you what each function is. Number four fella, he's like a goalie in hockey. He's the fellow who's responsible for defense. Then the fellows play up front, and of course, you have your lead man. And those ponies, you can only use about one a chucker. They get pretty tired. You can bring them back in third or fourth chucker if you need be. Uh-oh, getting close. It looks like a goal, and the flag is up, but we I couldn't tell. Just who scored? Well, they're still playing. They're still so the playing. Ball. There's a little bit of a controversy here, Glenn, right now. The, the flag boy put that red flag up as the ball went between the posts. But the, the players are continuing to play now. And I would imagine one of the officials is going to call this thing back. Those players surely didn't think there was a goal because they all kept playing. But, of course, the umpires will con converge on uh, the uh, on the flag boy here in a moment. This is Tommy Wayman coming up. To clear that goal, a nice shot by Tommy, 10 goal player. And the Cadillac USA team trying to get 2 2. Here's another look at it. Now you'll see the red flag go up, which indicates there is a little bit of a discrepancy right now. You see it right there in the center of your picture. He sure. now, now we got the officials discussing this. The flag boy is in the middle now. He's gesturing what went wrong, what went right. He is now pointing out that perhaps the ball went over the post. Maybe it didn't go over the post. In any case, we've got our first controversy of the afternoon. And while this is going on, Max Gale is going to talk with sometime actor, sometime polo player, Jeffrey Lewis, about some of the rules that are prevalent in polo. Well, actually, it's just the game. There are three basic things you do in polo. First, you don't want to fall off your horse. Secondly, you got to hit the ball. Take it easy here. Third, you got to play close to uh, a member of the opposing team, very close to him. Now you do all these three, so, so, so you can eventually make a goal for your team, and that's polo. One of the things that uh, that I get have gotten in the few times I've had a chance to play polo, I managed to to create uh, consistent penalties by crossing the line of the ball. Could you explain that one to me? Well, whenever you, when you hit the ball, the direction that the ball is going in or went in is the line of the ball. Now. Um, a person coming up along that line of the ball, they usually follow in behind the ball to keep hitting it. If you cross that line and somebody is already on the line of the ball, then, then you've committed an infraction. So the controversy continues. Was it a goal or wasn't it? And the officials with Mike Harley, he is the umpire in the center trying to figure it out. Did Cadillac USA tie up the game or didn't they? Well, we'll have this decision on this controversy and more polo from Santa Barbara right after this. decision has been made by the officials. It is not a goal as we watch Joe Barry, number four for Cadillac USA, line up for a penalty shot. Evidently, somebody for the International All-Stars committed a foul before the goal was scored. So it's disallowed. International All-Stars still leading Cadillac USA by a score of two to one. And the penalty shot was no good and the play continues. Eddie Moore makes a nice shot up there to uh, Robbie Walton on the gray horse. And that's uh, Willie Nash out in front. Willie Nash controlling this ball. 
Nice near side shot into goal. He does not score. I can't see where the ball is from there. The ball right in front of the goal post. And Bart Evans turns quickly on the ball. And now we have a whistle. There is a whistle. It could have been one horse going perpendicular to the gray horse. However, there's a consultation going on at the far end of the field. So far, the officials try to agree. Was there a penalty? Was there not a penalty? And we're waiting for their decision right now as we look at Willie Nash from the International All-Stars getting involved in this decision. If the umpire overrules the two referees, it's his decision, but he has to be appealed to by the two referees should they disagree. And evidently, there was an inadvertent whistle blown because play is going to continue here. The score remains International All-Stars there in the white against the team in the black, the Cadillac USA, 2-1 to one International. And Joe Barry made a nice neck shot, but it's out of bounds, and so we'll have a throw in from the sideline. The field is 300 yards long, 150 yards wide. And now the ball is put in play against the sideline. And here we have a little stick work there. Robbie Walton gets the ball up. And here's coming down on the ball is Eddie Moore. Eddie Moore will back this ball. Well, he overrides the ball. That's not usual for Eddie Moore. He's it's about really an eight is. goal man. That's right. And was 10 goals too. But it was picked up nicely by Joe Barry up to uh, Graham Bray. Graham Bray can't get a mallet on it. And it's backed by Danielle Gonzalez. Here goes Robbie Walton on the great horse. He's got good control, but then overrides. And coming through is Eduardo Moore. There's Robbie Walton. Can't get a mallet on it. Eddie Moore coming up. Robbie Walton gets, oh, it hits the horse. But it's still in play, going almost to the back. Oh, what a beautiful shot. That ball Danielle. hit the goal post, the outside goal post. That's no it. goal. Too bad it was a beautiful shot by Danielle Gonzalez. And this is Tommy Wayman coming up the line with the orange hat. Great player. Here he comes on the sideline. Was like that, that ball, ball out of bounds? Sure well, like the play is me, continuing. I know the, ball, the play is still continuing. There's a goal. So it's a goal by Graham Bray for Cadillac USA, which ties this game at 2-2 here in the third chucker. But as we take another look at it, you'll see the ball go out of bounds. A player can go out and come in. The ball cannot cross that line completely out of bounds and still be considered legal. So it is not a goal. International All-Stars continue to lead two to one. And more on the rules of polo from Max Gale and Jeffrey Lewis. One of the other basic rules is uh, bumping. You, there, you, a lot of bumping goes on. You, if a person's coming in on the ball, you can bump him off the line of the ball. You, you just move him off and then, so then you have a shot at it. Um, in the English rules, it says you escort the man out of the play. <laughs> If you have to say to the other person, um, sorry, old chap, very sorry about that, then it's probably an infraction. I don't know where Jeffrey Lewis got that English accent. Clint Eastwood, you know, played the brother of Jeffrey Lewis in a movie called Every Which Way But Loose. Anyway, we're returning to the action now. It's International All-Stars 2, Cadillac USA 1. As we pick up the action, we're still late in the third chucker. And that's uh, Danielle Gonzalez hitting a long ball down into the corner it's still in play that's Danielle Gonzalez coming in um, beautiful shot and it is a goal Stu look at the, the flag is up what a shot Danielle, Danielle Gonzalez. Gonzalez on La Rosa at one time he was a 10 goal player and now he's an iron butt wait a minute wait a minute they're calling it back they're calling it back we have another controversy how often do we have as many controversies as we've had in today's match this is unusual. There's been more times when the uh, referees have uh, disagreed and had to go to that third man or the umpire over on the sidelines. I don't think Gonzalez is winning his argument right now because I believe the officials have ruled no. You see, it's a free in from the far side over there. That was, uh, that was Joe Barry hitting in to the uh, sideline. And there goes Graham Bray. A nice shot down with, with uh, Danielle Gonzalez riding alongside of him. But... And now they've turned the ball, and that's uh, Robbie Walton makes a back shot. Action continues here in the third chucker at Santa Barbara. We've got one team rated 30 goals. That's the International All-Stars, and Cadillac USA is rated 31 goal team. And that's Danielle Gonzalez overrides, and Tommy Wayman picks up the ball. Coming around, that's Robbie uh, Walton on the gray horse, overrides, and uh, Tommy can't hook him. There's an unorthodox, beautiful, well-placed shot by Danielle Gonzalez, and Gonzalez gets a foul there because... It looked okay, like Graham Bray perhaps reached inside to take the shot, 
with a player from the opposing team on him right behind. Am I right? That's right. In other words, he should have made the shot on the offside or right hand side of his post. So the penalty shot for international all stars by Gonzalez, half the distance to goal, no good. Play continues. Still two to one international all stars. And here we have Eddie Moore making a nice back shot, and it's out of bounds. And joining us now, a man who was a 10 goal player for 17 straight years, Bob Skeen, one of the great polo players. Bob, I know that uh, you were an Australian born in, uh, in India, actually, and so you've played there with all the greats of India. Could you tell us where polo started in that part of the world and how it came to our country? Well, the history of polo goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, but it was first played in India, as I gather, around 1400. And uh, then for, they, it was played there for quite a while, and then around 1600, it died out until 1860 something and some uh, British tea planters in the state of Manipur saw the Indians playing it and they thought to themselves well that looks pretty interesting it's the British people who took it from England to all these various countries even down to Argentina originally by the time it got to Argentina those people really went to work on it and they improved their skills and by 1949 the Argentines were playing the Americans right here in Los Angeles at Beverly Hills. Well, there's Loretta Young. You know, a lot of the stars came for the games and played the game. There was Will Rogers in the old days and Spencer Tracy, Walt Disney, many others. Robert Stack played as recently as a few years ago. And the goal is scored at the Beverly Hills Polo Club. And uh, way back in the 30s, uh, here's Will Rogers, Great actor, great homespun philosopher, well-loved, great polo player. Uh, you know, his uh, grandson, Chuck Rogers, is a professional polo player now. We get all kinds of responses when people come to see this beautiful game of polo, but I think Will Rogers summed it up best. You better not invite me if you don't want me. <laughs> Here are some celebrities taking Will Rogers' advice. They're here to play their celebrity match, and it'll be a good one. Stu? We'll be right back with more here. Polo at its best right after this. We are early in the first celebrity chucker, the Cadillac USA team in the black uniforms leading the pink team. That's the Pims team by a score of 2-0 on two early goals. Ted Dawson of ABC, Max Gale from the Barney Miller Show, along with Grant Kramer from Young and Restless, and Bill Atkinson is the pro. That's the four players for Cadillac USA. And for Pims, it's Doug Sheehan from Knott's Landing, well-known actor Jeffrey Lewis, Jimmy McNichol from General Hospital, and Steve Crowder is the pro. And we pick up the action now, 2-0 in favor of Cadillac USA. Here came Ted Dawson around the corner, and there's Steve Crowder with a nice drive out of the lineup. Steve goes to the ball, and there's, uh, I think that's Atkinson there in the back trying to pick off that ball. How tough is it to formulate a team-type effort here, Glenn? Because these are celebrities who are not professional players. How do they work themselves in so there's some sort of cohesion here? What Bill Atkinson is doing there is he's trying to keep his all of his players out in front of him with him hitting the ball up to them. You'll see there's Bill Atkinson in the black coming through there trying to make that play, mm -hmm. and he'll punch it out for one of his players to drive on down. They're serious about this. I mean, Max Gale, he says this is what he looks forward to all year long to get into this. This is the second year doing this. Bill Atkinson has control, and he scores a goal, second of the game. So it's 3-0 Cadillac, USA over Pims in the Celebrity Polo Contest. Those guys who don't play it on a regular basis, those celebrities are doing pretty well out there. They're doing terrific. You know, watching these professionals play, play a while ago makes it look pretty easy. But these fellas are doing just great. Don't you think so, Stu? And they're having a lot of fun. Pro Bill Atkinson with two goals so far, and earlier we talked. Is there any kind of a law that says you got to train somebody before he gets aboard the horse? Or can anybody just get on a horse, go out there, and get into a game? Stu, you could play today. I got three horses I could sell you, and you can get, I can get you some boots, and you can go out and play today. But isn't that dangerous without having any kind of knowledge or experience? Yes, very That's dangerous. Why you're telling me go ahead and do it, <laughs> yeah, huh? Right. <laughs> Well, I mean, isn't there some kind of a school that tells people how to play polo? Uh, yes, there's 
people that, uh, in fact, I give instructions myself and on everything, and I watch them, but there's some people that don't do that. They just buy a horse and buy the equipment, and they get a membership, and they start playing, and it's, uh, it's dangerous, and they never learn right. Now, you say it's dangerous. Somebody can fall off a horse, obviously, and break a bone, but if you, if you play by the rules, where you don't go opposite one horse going the other way, you've got to go by the line, you're going to stay, you're not going to get into too much trouble. Well, it takes a long time to learn that. It takes, uh, you know, some people have played 20 years and still don't know it. <laughs> I mean, it could be very dangerous for a um, young player or a new player to go out and do that. You know, Stu, I've been playing polo with uh, Bill Atkinson for 30 years, and he's really one of the top pro players in the United States and one heck of a good athlete. And it also proves the point that you should be a little bit careful if you haven't had too much experience in playing polo. As we look at Max Gale right there, that's our buddy right in the middle of that. And it's the Cadillac USA team leading Pims by a score of 3 0 now as we're about to resume play. Folks here at Santa Barbara enjoying watching some of the folks you watch in TV and movies. Get on a horse, and do their best at the game of polo. That, that was uh, Bill Atkinson, this long shot down into the corner, and uh, there's uh, Jeffrey Lewis makes a good back shot. Now, Jeffrey's Coming been to... playing polo a little bit. Yes, he has. He's been playing both here in town and up at the, uh, uh, at the equestrian center and playing very well. This Steve Crowder setting up the ball there to one of the players, and uh, Bill Atkinson covering the back. He'll try to back that ball up to his players in front of him. Jimmy McNichol, who is the third player, number three, on the PIM team, said that this is only the second or third time he's ever played polo. So you got to give him an E for effort there, don't you? Jimmy's had some experience over at the uh, equestrian center also. He took some, um, uh, had some practice games over there, and he really took to it very well. It is still 3-0 in favor of Cadillac over Pim. Cadillac, the team in the black. And the pink team, of course, being Pims. Well, we have the ball down here in the corner. A hard shot to goal from that spot. Very difficult. That's Ted Dawson out there in the corner and covered now by Steve Crowder, who turns on the ball. Three celebrities and a pro on each team. Atkinson has the two goals for Cadillac. And here's an attack. It keeps the ball opened up. You see that nice, uh, that nice back shot by Bill Atkinson. There's a long drive by Steve Crowder. Look at that ball way down in front of the players. Action coming right at us. And again, turns the ball, puts it back to his players that are the number ones and two on his team. Steve Crowder. And, and we got a goal. Steve that, Crowder, I believe, was it? That was. First one for the Pins team. Here's another look at it. Right through everything. And that was Max Gale took a shot and almost stopped that goal. So Pims get their first goal, but you want to see something unusual in polo? Three players on the same team for Pims all going for the ball. McNichols is there. Lewis is there. Sheehan is there. And the ball winds up below Jimmy McNichols' horse. Not supposed to happen like that, but it's it did. Not supposed to be there, is it, Steve? So it's three to one. Cadillac USA over Pims as we're back to the action once again. Pims in the pink, trying to get back into this polo game. Bill Atkinson makes a nice back shot, puts it up to the front end. There's Ted Dawson going to the ball, followed by Steve Crowder, makes a nice near side shot. There's another nice near side shot. They're really getting into it right here, and there you got a goal by Ted Dawson. So right now, Cadillac takes a four to one lead. Another look. Well, Glenn, I'd like to compare a little bit. What's the difference between the style of polo that is played by the pros and the polo that's being played by these celebrities? You've got to remember, they don't do this often. It's a little bit like driving a Chevrolet on a freeway or trying to drive a Formula One on a Grand Prix course. It's just a big difference. Or uh, how about these celebrities get out and have a little softball once in a while, and then we take them down and let them face a big league, a big league pitcher. It's the same kind of a thing. We're in Santa Barbara, and what would be more appropriate than to talk to some folks who appear on NBC's daytime drama, aptly called Santa Barbara. 
Is this your first polo match that any of you have seen? This or? is my first polo your match. Your first one. Not your Marcus. reaction. I'm going to get to her I in a minute. I like this a lot. I yeah. like the, the atmosphere. I like the champagne. It's delicious. That's Tattinger's. That's really nice. The Why music. Are you shivering? Because I'm freezing. My back <laughs> is, is open back Whoa. here. <laughs> what about you, Margaret? Is this your first polo match? It isn't my first polo match. I was here last year, and I love it. And the gentleman that I date, his partner, played the 1 o'clock match. So, what is his name? Uh, Dr. Toby Mayer. You had to hesitate for a minute. I'm wondering. <laughs> Toby oh, will love it that so I said Joel. his name. <laughs> Joel, have you seen Polo before? One time at the uh, Equidome. Is that what yeah, they call it in Griffith Los Park? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a fabulous game. Isn't it fun? You just gotta you gotta take a little time to understand it though. But once you understand it, it's great. It's very simple. A chucker is seven and a half minutes long. They play six chuckers, and whoever gets the most goal wins. That's all there is. <laughs> I got it. I'm got ready. it. Can I go out? Can I all go right. Out? And so, Ted Dawson, Max Gale, Grant Kramer, and Bill Atkinson of the Cadillac team wind up beating Pims by a score of four to one. An interesting celebrity game, but there's more professional polo coming right up. Just back from the celebrity polo match, we have Max Gale. I wonder how you feel right now. Well, I feel good about being on the winning team, and I made, a, I think, a significant contribution. I stayed away from all the places where I could have created some problems, don't you think? <laughs> Max, you really played well. We were very pleased with the whole game. And I know it was difficult out there in the middle of the field. The, the field's pretty badly cut up. Did it bother you? No, it didn't bother me. I just had to work out the communication with my horse who kept saying, let me do it, let me do it. We're just starting the fourth chucker, Internationals, out in front of Cadillac by a score of three to one. The International team in the white Cadillac in the black. This is professional polo now. Joe Barry got an early penalty shot, and he's got a long way to go, doesn't he, Glenn? He surely does, Stu. He's teeing that ball up so he can get a good long shot at goal, which is 150 yards away. That's one and a half football fields. How often can you score that far away, and does he have to have an unobstructed shot? Most players wouldn't even be able to hit the goal from there, but a fellow like Joe Barry can do it probably one out of 20 times. Here it is, and it is going to be short. So the score remains 3-1 to one in favor of the Internationals as they start the action coming this way. And here's a shot that appears to be, it is going to be, it's out of bounds. It's out of bounds. So it's three to one internationals over Cadillac and we'll be back with more Pro Polo right after this. the fourth chucker it is still three to one the internationals over the Cadillac as we swatch some of the action here at Santa Barbara professional polo at its best and while we're watching some of this Glenn I thought we talked earlier about the fact that there are four positions and we might kind of discern what those positions are for instance what's the number one position what what should he be should he be a defensive player offensive player or what the number one player is always out in front and he's a very offensive player he should score more goals than anyone else because all the rest of his teammates are driving the ball up to him. He should kind of also be close to being on both sides of his back. I would imagine so if the game goes the other way, he seems to be in the right position at all times. Well, he hopes to be uh, outside of his back, or in other words, toward his own goal like this player is right now. There's a good example of it, carrying it up the, up the field. And uh, he's trying to be ahead of his back at this time while he's scoring. He almost had him beat there. Now, the two position, he's got to be, I would guess, an aggressive player. The number two position is the one that they say never stops. He can go any place he wants to go all of the time. He, it is the most aggressive position on the team. And by the way, Tommy Wayman there in the orange hat, was one of the greatest number two players in America and was rated 10 goals for many years at that position. So he's got to be just about involved in every aspect of the game, that number two man. He's a very integral part of the game. Number two just going out of your picture, trying to get his team back in there. For the black team was Tommy Wayman. 
That's uh, Daniel Gonzalez with a hard drive up this way. He's playing the number four position. But wait a minute, Glenn. There is a whistle, so we have a penalty being called. And let's wait a moment and see just exactly against which team it's going to be called. It looks like the way he's coming this way that it's going to be called against the international team. There's the drop now. We'll see what player. I, I think you're right. I think what happened is when Gonzalez came around there, he didn't make contact with Joe Barry, who had that line on the ball. And Barry is lining up to take the penalty shot in the black shirt there with the number four. He's the number four position, the back position, and he'll get the penalty shot, and he's kind of famous for taking those long shots. This is a penalty five position, which is almost half the distance of the entire field. This is uh, bad news for the uh, All-Stars because Joe can put this ball right down there in front of the goal where it will be easy for his team to make a conversion and score. So let's see what he does here. He gets good wood on long it, doesn't he? Drive. Oh, it was a long drive, and it went clear over the back line, Stu. So that ball traveled more than 150 yards in the air, but it didn't go through the goal. Joe is happy with the distance, but not with the accuracy. That's surely the truth. Well, here comes Danielle Gonzalez, and he was hooked nicely. That's Eddie Moore taking that shot. Eddie's playing very well today. Oh, look at that hard bump. Did you see that? And the horse coming from behind. Yes, you see the horse coming from behind. Eddie Hit Moore, this. isn't it? That's it, Eddie Moore. And he's down on the ground. I tell you, when Eddie Moore falls off a horse, you know that was one bad, tough bump. He's one of the best horsemen I've ever seen. But he seems to be all right. He's up on his feet. Eduardo Moore, who is an eight-goal player out of Argentina, playing on the International All-Stars. Here's OK, shaking up. Now, talk about injuries now. He just kind of got bumped, and he fell off his horse. But that's why they wear those protective helmets, because of the heads being so vulnerable. Of course, Eddie was lucky there. He did hang on for a long time. You saw that in the picture. Whereas normally, a, a rider would have been knocked right off of his horse and could have been injured badly. If a player is knocked off the horse and play stops, the player stays down, is that when they stop the game? The game is stopped when there's either a very rough play or if the player is on the ground, they do stop the play. All right, Eddie Moore is back in action. The game is continuing. It is still three to one. International All-Stars, we're in the fourth chucker. Six chucker game. And the Cadillac team trying to come back. And that was uh, Robbie Walton coming up there with that ball. There is Daniel Gonzalez. Can't get wood on it. Willie Nash. Here's Willie Nash. Oh, he, he overrides the ball. A nice near side shot by Daniel Gonzalez up to his front man, and that is in over the corner over the back line. No, no goal. goal. No goal. Coming into your picture, Joe Barry, who's had a couple of penalty shots today. He's been long, but a little bit off target. And he hit that ball all the way off that back line to the center of the field. Again, about 150 yards. By the way, did you see that foul there just a moment ago when the rider cut right in front of the other horse. And of course, that calls for a penalty, and now we're going to see it here. And taking the shot is the number two rider. It's Tommy Wayman. I believe that was a goal, too, wasn't it, uh, mm -hmm. it Yes, sure it sure was. So Cadillac comes back, and now they get their second goal. Tommy Wayman gets the goal. He's a nine-goal player, and now the score is three to two. So the international lead has been cut. Just a one goal advantage here in the fourth chucker of play. Now, the question is can Cadillac continue the momentum that they've gained right now? Can they pull up, get even, or maybe go ahead? We'll see. Well, that Cadillac team certainly has, has the athletes and the horse flesh to do it. Among the spectators watching the proceedings here, Oscar winner, actor, Mr. Ernest Borgnine and his lovely wife Tova talking with Max Gale. This is really something. Uh, it, it is. It is happening right now on the field, and I think that it is absolutely sensational, really. And you see those ponies take off, and those riders are right in tune with them. It's like a machine, and they flow together. I mean, what's more beautiful? That's right. Nice people, really. We're nearing the end of the fourth chucker, and the internationals leading Cadillac USA by a score of four to two as we watch the action here at Santa Barbara. Did you see that goal of Robbie Walton? What a beautiful neck shot. Hmm. Outstanding. 
Now they're lining up here in the end of this period. And the ball is, oh, Willie Nash has got the ball coming around and he's off and going. Here comes Tommy Wayman and Danielle Gonzalez on a mare called Hitana, which means gypsy. 